Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am Muriel. This is As Told by Muriel. And I'm just shooting a quick little video. I am actually in Myrtle Beach. I was doing some vlogging earlier, thinking I'm going to put a video out about my time here in Myrtle Beach. I don't know. I, I really didn't do much. I came here because a friend of mine is here for a job conference. And, um, you know, she <laughs> wanted some company up here. So I just came out here to relax. I'm going home tomorrow. I've been here for two days yeah i'll be going home tomorrow but i came on here to make a quick little video to talk to you guys um like i said i'm trying to be a little skill heavy so i'm gonna just give you like five don'ts for new grad lpns some things to let you know what not to do um when beginning your first lpn job whether it's in a hospital a nursing home um this kind of won't some of them won't apply to everywhere because a lot of places are electronic but there are still some things that will apply to um even electronic places so my five first don't if you're a nurse lpn um new grad rn whatever and you're working i say in a long-term care facility any facility that is working with like paper Mars because there are still some facilities out there with paper Mars. Do not subscribe or order. Subscribing the order is when, say you have an order that says, give Lasix three times a day, um, PO, which means by mouth. And the doctor decides he wants to change that order and you and say you've been doing that for the first, 10 days of the month, you know, that the first 10 days of the month, it was LASIK three times a day. And then the doctor comes, evaluates the patient and looks at the labs and decides, okay, well, I'm going to decrease it to two times a day. And so he does a, a order to DC LASIK three times a day, which means discontinue, administer twice daily. So now on your order on the sheet, it says three times a day. Well, what some nurses have been doing is they will go and scratch through the three times and put twice and they will scratch through the times nine, one, and five and just, they'll scratch through the one and leave the nine and five. And so going forth on that same line, nurses will begin to give it two times a day. Now the problem with this is that you are subscribing an order. And so you really can't tell when that old order was discontinued and when the new one was supposed to start. You are not supposed to do that. You are supposed to actually discontinue the first order and then on another line, write the order for the LASIK two times daily. Have put You could put the date on there that says start um, say this new order was written November the 10th at 1 p.m. You have your order start November the 10th and the first dose they will get is the 5 p.m. dose. And then the next day they will get the 9 a.m. dose. So, yeah, so that is a subscribing order and that's what's been getting a lot of people um, not in trouble so much, but it causes a lot of confusion on the MAR. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Um, number two, don't. Do not give one patient another patient's narcotic. Um, you will learn in the nursing home that, in long-term care and a lot of facilities, that there are times when people do not reorder a patient's narcotic. And there are times that they will order the narcotic, but pharmacy will not send it. And so you're going to administer a narcotic to a patient because it's scheduled and they have don't have any. But Mr. Jones has that same narcotic, the same dosage. He has a packet for it. So some nurses were pulling the pill from Mr. Jones to give to the other patient and then signing it off on Mr. Jones' sheet. Um, I've actually seen this y'all recently give in to and then have the other patient's name or room number on there. Y'all, this is um, medication, uh, what is the word? Medication, I can't think of the word. I'm going to put it up here. But it's taking medication from one patient and giving it to another or taking it from one patient doing something. Um, you are not supposed to do that. <laughs> Even though 
it's um, same dosage, the same medication. You are not supposed to take another patient's narcotic and give it to. In the situation like this, when the medication is not there, what you're supposed to do is you should call the doctor and you should, um, well, first of all, call the pharmacy. Because when you call the pharmacy, they may tell you we are sending it tonight or they may tell you, well, we can't send that medication because their script has run out. And so if they tell you the script has run out, then you call the doctor and you tell, ask the doctor, you say, hi, Dr. So-and-so, patient so-and-so. Now they may be upset with you because the medication has run out because it's the nurse's responsibility to let the doctors know before medication runs out if they need a new prescription. Um, but some, some nurses have been pulling, pulling, pulling and just let it run out. And this happens so often, y'all, so often. <laughs> you just call the doctor and you'd be like, hey, Dr. So-and-so and so so-and-so needs, you know, patient so-and-so needs a new script for their, um, say it was, um, say it was their, uh, Ativan. So patient so-and-so needs a new prescription written for their Ativan and you tell them what the frequency is in the dosage. And then you let the doctor know, um, you know, at this time we don't have it available. Can I hold that dose and administer, <laughs> start administering it once it is available, um, administer a dose when, when it becomes available. And the, you know, the doctor's gonna be upset, but they're gonna say, yeah, I mean, what can you do? It's not there. Um, so on that dose that they're supposed to get on your time, you circle it or put do not administer, did not administer. And then you write an order stating, hold medication until available from pharmacy. That will cover you from doing a med error as far as taking it from another patient or just circling it saying not given. That order stating to hold until medication is available from pharmacy, the doctor will sign it <laughs> and you'll be covered for that missing dose that you had. Okay, another don't is do not send a patient's medication administration sheet out of the building when a patient has to go to a doctor's appointment they have to go to the emergency room they have to go anywhere out of the building do not send the medication administration sheet this specifically is for um people who still have paper mars medication administration sheets i hate to say it but um the ones that are paper sometimes there are holes on there where people didn't sign off the medication Sometimes there's all kind of stuff written on there. Um, when there are holes on the MAR, this is stating that this person did not get their medication on that particular day at that particular time. When you have five or six holes on the MAR, you know how many times that is looking like, even though the patient may have gotten it, but the nurse just neglects to sign it out. That's looking like you are not, you're um, delaying treatment by not giving the patient their medication. You send this out to a hospital or doctor's office, the first thing they're gonna do is, this patient doesn't even get their meds like they're supposed to, you know. What you send, you send a copy of the physician orders. That is what you send. That will have all the medication listed on it showing what they are supposed to get. And there's nothing on the physician order sheets that would alert anyone to the fact that this patient didn't get that Tylenol at that time. This patient didn't get their lactulose. And I say this because we had a patient at one facility who she had a quite a few empty spaces where they were supposed to be signed off on giving her lactulose. Uh, her lactulose was needed to bring down her, it was very high and um, she had to get sent out to the hospital. When she got sent out to the hospital, they tested her. Her levels were high. Lactulose um, is given to decrease the ammonia levels in a person's bloodstream. So this patient has had, um, we sent her out because she was like kind of non-responsive, really. Her ammonia levels were very elevated. Um, her paperwork, her medication she was sent out for her, and it showed that she hadn't, like there were like five unsigned spaces on her MAR where it looked like she wasn't getting her lactulose. That was a problem for the facility. Um, had the hospital taken that any further, you know, that's delaying treatment. And that could have been the cause of the patient not receiving her, uh, the patient having to be sent out and having a high ammonia level. Um, yeah, so never send the MAR out, send physician order form.
Okay, number four that you don't do. Do not give information over the phone to anyone that calls about a patient unless they are the representative or the POA. You know, people will call and say, I'm their sister, I'm this my brother, whatever, whatever. Can you tell me about so-and-so? Do not give it unless they you have permission in writing from the rep the RP to give this information to the brother, the sister, whoever. Um, there are problems in families that we don't know about. You know, I've there are problems in families we don't know about. There are patients who are under social services direction, things like that. And you give information because you're like, well, they come in and visit her all the time. I know that's her brother. I know that's her uh, mother. I know that's her sister. They come in and visit her all the time. You are violating HIPAA regulations. If this person isn't down as their um, representative or um, or they don't have power of attorney or, you know, you could you could lose your license for giving or, or face a possible lawsuit for giving information to someone if if the representative wants that person to receive information about their mother, brother, or whatever, you could call the representative and you can say, hey, so-and-so was calling about your mother. Um, they want to know, you know, your sister, whoever is calling about your mother, they want to know how your mother is doing. Um, is it okay for me to give them that information? And even with that, sometimes you should still not give the information. You can let the, you can let the RP know, hey, they were calling about information, um, you can call the RP and you can let them know, hey, so-and-so was calling for information about your mother, um, but they are not down as a representative. I wanted to know, was it okay to give them the information? And they may tell you, yeah, it's okay and there is not. But even with them telling, no, it's not. But even with them telling you that, if they say yeah, then you need to tell them, okay, well, can you come down and have them put down on the chart as someone who can be notified of um, information? Because just because you see that person coming in and visit that person all the time, that does not mean they have the legal right, legal authority to be informed of anything that's going on with that patient. And the way I feel is if they have that right, if they want to know, they can call the RP and find out themselves. It's the reason why there are people out here who are children of the residents, who are sisters or brothers of the residents, who are mothers of the residents, who are not to be told anything about the patient. There are instances where... It's abuse, neglect in the home, um, family members stealing the patient narcotics, taking them, you know, DSS um, is covering this patient. There are so many things. So do not give information on a patient if the patient um, in, the nursing, in the nursing home, long-term care setting, if they're not the RP. In the hospital, some people have passcodes, passwords, that they have to give you that password in order to get information on that patient. Um, and most of the time, this is told to you in morning report. So, you know, like I had a patient the other, about a couple weeks ago, someone was calling to give me, ask information about the patient. She represented herself to be the patient's wife or whatever. And that patient had a password that had to be um given and when i asked her that she didn't know the password and so i wasn't able to give her anything because you know i started out i was like oh he's doing okay and then i was like oh okay um do you know what the password is to get information on him she didn't know you know because in the flow of the moment my first thing was she's doing okay she didn't know and so i couldn't give her any information so yeah do not give information on a patient unless they are the rp or they have the passcode um, yeah, I think I said five things, but this four things, y'all. I'm going to stop this video. Cause, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell y'all. Please like, comment, subscribe um, if the information you feel I'm giving you is valuable. I'm going to make a, this is going to be a short one, but I will come back with you guys probably the next couple of days and make another video giving you a few more tips on uh, how to's and long term care and in the hospital for new grads. Thank you. Oh, don't forget to go back i'm i'm going to drop a link in here um down below for my report sheet booklets thank you all to everyone who has ordered so far if you've gotten your book and it has been helpful leave a comment um down below or in this video or whatever video um how it's been helping you i got feedback from one of my nurses up here and she was like it she has the acute care book and she was saying it was so helpful because this helps you to give quick yes or no answers to things that you will forget to pass on and report so yeah that's exactly what i meant for it to do and um yeah so anyway i will talk to you guys later bye